smooth point, the middle over line, neck and pass and back. Uh, and then we eliminated the remaining 13 rebellions variables. The, the PCA generated three principal components that explain 97.4% of the total variations in the data. Uh, consistent with joint these findings, we observed that the first principal component captured overall size differences. The second principal component represents ankle variations, and the third principal component describes thigh variation of all these objects. To identify groups of similar data, we have introduced the principal components in spectral graphics. The spectral graphics algorithm translated. Uh, translated this data in the event space and applied keys on the first three data components to achieve this really visualization that you can see. Um, so this algorithm identified four, four clusters from which we have extracted the representative shapes uh, that we call prototypes, which are basically the subjects who are the closest to the central leaf of each group. Uh, on this figure, uh, the central is denoted by the right point. Um, so, to explain the clusters, uh, the first cluster uh, shows a light developed path with a small article and mid lower leg region, suggesting a muscular build, especially around the quadriceps, which is the pelvic region. Cluster 2 is characterized by a thick angle, angle. Um, uh, but uh, reduces the progressive in the rest of the leg, um, making it this place. The third cluster uh, presents a conical or trapezoidal leg shape with uh, smaller differences between adjacent circumferences, leading to a more straight silhouette. And finally, the fourth cluster um, represents a uniform and distribution along the leg, with both the lower leg and thigh region going proportionally. Um, we have also constructed the 2D shape of all the legs, which are line graph representations of the circumferential values and the corresponding height of the leg. Uh, to be able to accurately compare these interpolation lines, we perform normalization by scaling and superposing the minimum bounding boxes uh, to target size. Like this, we performed, okay, about the normalized um, interpolation lines you can see on the top of this figure. Uh, and then what the unnormalized groups. The same the same clustering with the same clustering labels you can see uh, on um, We apply the same spectral clustering uh, on these interpolation lines, which also resulted in four clusters. And similarly to the one shapes filter, uh, the shapes are more or less the same. They are not uh, over uh, superposing labels, but they, they identify the same shapes, uh, which is the muscular build, the conical trapezoidal shape, the one which is linear with less muscleness, and then the one which is having the concrete of the right to um, the uh, now I will uh, move on to the presentation of uh, the methodology that we use to extract three leg shapes. Uh, so our challenge was to find a way to capture the shape differences of the leg using more than circumferential measurements. Now our idea was to take longitudinal projection lines uh, in different areas of the leg instead of the disconceptions. And to be able to capture the mentioned projections in the same way for all of the subjects, we made a call to the anthropometrical points that our scanner identified, which you can also see on the first figure 
and oops, I say that in here. Um, and then we have created a reference for frame that's fully dependent on the spatial position of these anthropological codes. Once these uh, coordinate, the, once the coordinates of these points are changed, uh, the reference frame changes with it and allows the projection of the frame onto the leg. Um, and the reference frame has a significant, has this specific shape for a reason. And it's because the projection plane is placed in the area of the knee, like on the level of the knee. Therefore, this area uh, will project uh, correctly onto the leg. Um, this is not the same in case of the ankle and in case of the upper thighs, because they are not uh, found in the same space, uh, same plane as the knee. Um, and this, the angle and the thigh region has to be really close to the leg in order to have a correct projection. Um, so we, we made the projection lines close to the thigh and the, uh, and the ankle, and then compensated in the, in the knee area, which we placed further away from the leg, so all of the projection lines can be placed outside of the leg. This operation made it possible to project 16 um, longitudinal lines on the legs, which are placed in specific anthropological uh, areas of the leg, um, and will uh, help us know much more about the shape of the leg than the second measurements. Uh, we have also uh, segmented the legs uh, at the area marked on this figure, and uh, as well as the projection lines, and we obtained uh, we obtained um, uh, leg meshes that either have more or less uh, uh, number of faces, and. Uh, the, the projection lines are like a simplified um, version, a simplified version of the leg geometry, and this is proved by the fact that if I were to make a patchwork using these uh, projection lines, I would get back with really minimal loss the shape of the radar. So. Uh, in our research, we encountered several difficulties and challenges. Uh, one of the primary challenges was the extended time required for the treatment of the data. Uh, it's extracting shape descriptors uh, and submitting that challenge in a cloud environment was a very time consuming process. Uh, additionally, database preparation was challenging as it couldn't be fully automated. And um, to work on this, we are developing a CAD software extension that can significantly speed up the process and make it more efficient. Uh, another, major, another major obstacle was the limited data sets. With only 121 subjects implementing deep learning methods like commercial neural networks are challenging. Um, however, we plan to organize our data set by generating up to 2,751 samples through random rotations and um, rematching techniques. And this organization will allow for a better, better training of, of the algorithm. Um, we are also planning to collaborate with the uh, hospital in France to collect 3D surface scans of patients with lymphedema, which will expand our data sets and give us um, a new insight into how conditions affect life ontology. Uh, our hope is that the classification algorithm can identify distinct morphological groups within the new data set. In the future, we will handle our 3D mesh data as a new medium. 
treaty that has to be like both and that it wants to embed in this space. Uh, given their complex geometric properties, we will need specialized deep learning methods to effectively process them. So we will apply algorithms similar to subdivision subdivisions to process, which allows us to process triangular meshes. Uh, and by this algorithm, we could um, extract like a multi-dimensional feature vector that includes both shape and both descriptors. Um, and to extract more complex and informative representations of the data, we will develop an open encoder structure. And this open encoder will generate Latin space feature vectors, which will be crucial for performing our OSCOA specification. In this study, we aim to improve the design and the effectiveness of medical compression sockets uh, using three dimensional box scans to better understand black shapes. Um, this approach is particularly relevant for treating chronic illness insufficiency, uh, which affects a significant portion of the global population. Um, by collecting to these kinds of human legs and applying clustering algorithms such as k means and spectral clustering, we identified four main actions, or as we call them, um, And this finding suggests that personalized medical compression something could potentially improve both fit and comfort, addressing the limitation of traditional sizing systems, which often fail to work nowadays or individual shape variations. Um, looking ahead, one promising direction is to develop uh, is the development of adaptive worker types, uh, which are parametric models uh, that could help create a new and uh, more accurate sizing system for the industry. While this is not yet fully realized, it represents an exciting avenue for the future research. Thank you for your attention. Um, Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Some questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. So I have uh, one introducing question. A new data set from patient uh, from hospital, you are uh, you confirm that you have only uh, morphology, morphological uh, data. It's correct? Uh, the data set that we currently have is not uh, from Uh, 
Uh, and there are multiple um, directions in this research area. Uh, and they are more related to the meeting structure uh, of what that, the meeting structure, what they use, than to the morphology. Because the problem is that uh, you see that the ankle has the smallest circumference, and that's where the pressure is the highest in case of uh, medical compression stockings. And this area, which is really small, has to be put on uh, the, um, the, egg, yes, the heel, which is, like, oh, which is a much larger circumference area. So this is what gives the difficulty. Uh, morphologically speaking, we cannot change this. This is a direction for the maybe Thank you. Any other question? So I have one question for you. Um, you mentioned that you try data augmentation to increase the number of circles. Uh, maybe I missed it, but uh, can you tell us if it is effective or if it works well? What is the problem if it is? Well, yes, that's true that um, for machine learning networks and in general learning networks need a large amount of data and we don't yet have that much data. But if we augment it to a higher um, number, then it is a possibility to extract features from those data. So, um, it, it currently, like, it seems to be uh, working well. No question? So, you can find Timea for this presentation. Thank you, Tia. Thank you very much.